Tungtransport har varit en tuff nött i klimatarbete. Hvordan får vi ned de store utslippene fra lastebiler og trailere? CEO og grundlägger av amerikanske Nikola Motor Company, Trevor Milton, skal nå fortelle om den elektriske revolusjonen vi står foran i tungtransporten. Gi en varm applaus! Hi, I'm really glad for my... <laughs> I just learned that five minutes ago, so... Um, I'm, I'm really lucky to be here. I appreciate uh, being invited to come out here today. Uh, we have an incredible opportunity in the world, and that is to totally transform transportation as we know it. Heavy-duty transportation affects uh, emissions, climate change, many other things more than almost anything, anything else. It accounts for, um, uh, in the medical world, they contribute a lot of it to some of the health benefits that we're having out there. I mean, the health, health issues, I'm sorry. And... As an entrepreneur in America, that's one of the most uh, prized positions you can hold is someone who's been able to develop something that the world could use. It's why there's so many innovations that come out of America. Um, as a young boy, I always desired and dreamed of building a locomotive truck. My dad was managing the Union Pacific Railroad. And as a kid, I got to drive with the conductors inside the railroads, uh, railroad cars, the locomotives. And one day, this uh, locomotive uh, conductor had told me, he says, one day someone will be smart and build a locomotive truck. And that was, uh, that was when I was about seven or eight years old. And it stuck with me from that day. I figured, if a locomotives are so efficient, why aren't people not building a locomotive truck? So as a kid, I always dreamed. I said, you know, I'm going to build that thing one day. And as I got older, I got the opportunity to be able to build a company that is uh, turned into this worldwide phenomenon. Uh, within just a couple of months of launching our truck, and a few months following thereafter, we've racked up over $6.5 billion in pre-orders for our truck. Quite possibly one of the most successful launches in America's history for a product. And this is a, from a company that's not publicly traded. We were not Apple. We were a team of, uh, a very small team of engineers, entrepreneurs, and enthusiasts. So what I did is I was able to build this truck. This is the, this is the truck that will be launched in America uh, next year in in. August or September, that truck will be on the road with fleets testing under real life conditions. That means pulling 40, um, essentially 40,000 40, ton loads. I'm trying to do the conversion in my head for, uh, for here. And the ability to outperform a diesel in every category. Not only that, but 100% zero emission. This is the Nikola day cab. Uh, many of you may have seen the Nikola sleeper, which is a uh, longer truck with, a, with an area to sleep in the back of it. This is the, what they call the Nikola day cab. This will be the, the truck that we launch primarily first throughout the world, throughout America. And hopefully we're able to redesign and use that exact same powertrain to come to uh, uh, the Norwegian market and, and also into Europe. So how did it start? It really started from horses to horsepower to electric. And this is kind of the evolution of transportation in the world. And there's been major milestones along um, that path. You have from when horses first started, uh, people said, you'll never replace a horse. It'll never, ever, it'll never be replaced. That was when um, Henry Ford came out with the automobile. Over time, horses became less and less prevalent, and then they started rating their vehicles as horsepower, um, kind of in remembrance of the horses that got them to that position. Once the horsepower came out, then we kind of reached a limit with, the, uh, with some of those engines, and they started developing a diesel engine. During that same time, they developed an electric motor, a, a very brilliant man um, named Nikola Tesla. And he, it was just not enough to convince the, uh, the world that they should go electric. There was not enough ways to store the energy. There's a few other hurdles they had to overcome. So from horses to horsepower to nowadays, this is probably one of the most amazing uh, feelings as an entrepreneur is to look back in history and see how you've changed, um, how transportation has changed and how we can make our difference. Over the next 20 years, my generation has the biggest responsibility in the, uh, in the entire world. Uh, that responsibility is to transform transportation, emissions, health, and society as we know it. And hopefully for the better. There's a lot of people out there doing it for the worse. Our goal is to transform it for the better. And, uh, and so people say, well, how have you been able to bring this electric truck to uh, production? Why has no one else been able to do this? Why has uh, these other brands, these major OEMs, not been able to build an electric hydrogen zero emission semi truck that can outperform a diesel. Why are they not doing it? That's the number one question I get everywhere. 
The answer is, the answer is quite simple. Ultimately, these OEMs are making a lot of money. They're sitting there, they're, they're fat, they're happy, they're booked out with diesel orders. Quite frankly, they don't care that much. On, on, on the face value, they do. They'll go out there and they'll tell you how much they wanna change. But ultimately, in the back rooms, in the boardrooms, they're saying, we cannot change. We have billions of dollars in tooling. We have these factories that are running diesels. We cannot change. And then you've got the people inside the company that are working on the diesel engines and there's 4,000 employees. What do you tell those 4,000 employees that their jobs are gone? Because they're gonna replace themselves. If they were smart, they would say, I wanna replace myself. Those, those divisions should be able to go out there and actually replace themselves. Those are the most brilliant companies in the world. We, have a, we had a, an incredible opportunity to work with a company called Robert Bosch out of Germany. Robert Bosch's philosophy is that they wanna be the ones that replace themselves. This is what the OEMs should be doing, but they're not, and which opens up a great opportunity for someone like us, like Nikola. So how have we done this? How have we overcome the diesel engine? Uh, let me tell you a little bit about this. You have more horsepower and you have more torque than any other production vehicle on the road. Over 1,000 horsepower to the rear four wheels, over 2,000 pounds of torque to those wheels. And that is from the first RPM all the way until the 12,000th RPM. So that means our motors spin from zero to 12,000 RPMs and you have that torque range the entire time. So to give you an idea, going up a 6% grade, pulling a 40 ton load, the Nikola truck can maintain 65 miles an hour or about 100 and, uh, and um, I don't know how many kilometers, 100 kilometers or so, a little bit over that, indefinitely. A diesel pulling that load, the current production diesels would be under 15 miles an hour. You're nearly three times, up to almost four times more powerful with that torque curve that is continuous the entire time. So now you can outperform a diesel. That's, the, that's an important part. Like how, how do you outperform it? On top of that, you have all-wheel drive in the rear. So the rear four tires are actually driven by four motors. This becomes a, with electric motors, you don't lose efficiency by going all-wheel drive. With a diesel, you lose a lot of efficiency by going all-wheel drive. So, okay, now you have more power, you have more traction. What about more safety? Well, obviously, most important thing is that we're zero emission. That's, a, that's what we ultimately want to achieve. The second one is we can stop faster. So with an electric motor, you can begin initiating the braking within 30 milliseconds. To give you an idea on an air disc brake on a big truck, it takes, at full speed, it takes 65 feet to initiate braking. Well, you can initiate it, but to actually begin brake horsepower. We can do that in 30 milliseconds, and that equates to about six feet. So we have faster stopping times. We can see a 20 to 30% reduction in stopping times over a current diesel. Then you look at um, the center of gravity. So a lot of trucks that are, that are tipped over, um, some of the major problems with that is, is the driver's not paying attention. He's on a cell phone. Someone's called him. He's funneling, you know, uh, messing around, or he went to grab his drink, wasn't paying attention. He slams on his brake, and all of a sudden, his truck goes sideways. Next thing you know, he's on his side. With the Nikola truck, because all the batteries, the hydrogen, and the electric motors, and everything heavy on this truck is all down at the bottom, below the frame rail. Our center of gravity is not just a, a little bit, but it's, it can be up to over a meter lower than a diesel. That's a big deal. So that means more stability, safer driving, safer ability um, than, a, than a diesel. It also comes with great technology like autonomous driving and the ability for the truck to stop itself and for it to know what's coming up. So the ultimate goal is to never get that driver in a position where he can hurt himself or someone else on the road. And without electric drivetrains, you will never, you will not get there. It, it's, it's very difficult to control a gasoline or a diesel engine um, autonomously. You can do it, but the response rate is so slow compared to an electric vehicle that, it's, uh, that it becomes very problematic. You also have more comfort. Because you're electric, you have more room inside. We have a 21-inch infotainment display inside the cab. What does that mean? That means the driver can see his maps. He can see his loads. He can see, in America, he can see how much money he's earned. And for a, um, and my generation, ultimately, they're very connected. They, ever, they will not leave without their phone around, and they sleep with their phone right next to them. It's, uh, they're married to it. So they're getting away from the small little four-inch screens. No one wants them. My generation doesn't. They want the more connected vehicle. They want all their data. They want to sync with their phone. They want to see, all their, they want to see everything that's going on. Um, connectivity to all your music stations, everything else. So that's really important. The next one is the, more, uh, the, the value of the truck. So these are all important things that we had to overcome over a diesel. The value is probably one of the most important things. 
I was in, uh, uh, yesterday I was speaking to a group and I told them that Americans are more driven by the dollar. It's in our blood. Um, good or bad, it, it drives a lot of innovation. The society in America, the CEO makes a lot more than the other employees. In Norway, Norwegian and, uh, markets and, and other areas, there's not as big of a spread. Now there's good and bad for that. The good is society is ultimately um, very, uh, um, the, the standard of living is incredibly high for many people. Um, the downside of that is it doesn't thrive absolute entrepreneurship. So there has to be a balance somewhere and hopefully we can find that over time. But what that means is that we have, that we have the ability to, uh, to, to see things and go after them because of the money, because of the dollar. So I would say that Norwegians kind of put their lifestyle and their health kind of first before uh, many other things. And uh, the Americans are kind of the opposite. They put money before everything else and lifestyle next. Um, I know I did for 35 years. And just until just recently, I was like, you know, that's really where I have to focus more is on my lifestyle and my health, more so than the, than the money. And so when I, with this, the more value is an important part because in America, the trucking companies will buy a truck based upon how much money they're going to save. They don't care so much about the emissions. There are big groups in America that do care. There's a lot of people in America making change for the better, which is really awesome. Uh, they're slow at it. They're slower than here. But the advantage is, is they, they ultimately want the thing to make more money for them. So if we can take zero emission technology and actually make more money than diesel, we've, won, we've got the holy grail. And that's what Nikola is. That's what we've done. We are for absolute cost for cost. Um, I'm going to go through this. 30% less, around 30% less than a diesel starting from day one. So they no longer have to wait three, four, five years to get their money back. Some of these hurdles to get here, and I'll go through the cost savings here in a second. Some of the hurdles to get here um, have been uh, the fuel cell technology wasn't there. It is now. The high investment cost for the hydrogen infrastructure was not, was not there. But because Nikola's bundled it all together, when we sell a truck, we don't just sell a truck. You don't buy a truck. You lease it from us. You pay a per mile and that's it. It's the new way of doing things with millennials. They want to pay when they use it. They don't want to sit there in a driveway and, and, and try to figure out how to write it off on their taxes. That was my dad's generation. The new generation wants to use it, pay for it when they use it. And so what we've been able to do is say, okay, we can bundle the truck and the fuel, the hydrogen, because we produce it ourselves at Nikola. We can provide all the maintenance, the service, the warranty, everything all into one. And we're 30% less than a diesel. That's in America with the, with the absolute lowest cost of energy in the world. Our diesel price is one third the cost, uh, about one third the cost of what you guys pay per liter. And we can still make it make sense with zero emission now. We're 20 to 30% less. So what does that mean for, what does that mean for uh, Norway? That means humongous opportunities for savings. Some of our partnerships are some of the biggest in the world. Bosch, Ryder, Meritor, Pratt & Miller. Um, they've done their study on us to make sure that, we're, that we can achieve what we, what we, what we claim. Then you go into some of our other partners. Uh, what's, the next, uh, what's the next step for us? We're building a 1.5 million uh, square foot facility in, in America. And uh, it's about $1.5 billion allows us to manufacture all the trucks that we want to build. We're going to be able to build about 50,000 trucks a year. Um, I only have about 10 seconds left. So ultimately what I want to say is I want to say that, it, that the future is now in front of us. We have the ability to change the future. Nikola Motor Company came out of nowhere. We racked up, we landed over six and a half billion dollars in orders. My goal here this week at the Zero Conference was to study the Norwegian market and the European market. I really want to know how quick I can come into Europe because I know right now I can provide Europe and Norway a truck that is 30% less than a diesel and is 100% zero emission from production of the fuel to the consumption of it. And ultimately, that's what the world needs. Thanks so much for having, us, for having me here today.